Okay, today we're going to be looking at angles of rotation and radian measure. So we want to look at what is the relationship between the unit circle and radian measure. This is something you learned in geometry, but we're going to be refreshing our memory of it. So, in trigonometry, an angle of rotation is an angle formed by the starting and ending points of a ray that rotates about its endpoint. The angle in standard position in a coordinate plane when the starting position of the ray or initial side of the angle is on the positive x-axis and has its endpoint at the origin. To show the amount and direction of rotation, a curved arrow is drawn to, the, to show the terminal side. So you can see in this image here, my initial side is that positive x-axis. My terminal side, my terminal side is over here. And this arrow shows me that which direction I rotated. So that distance between the initial side and terminal side creates my angle. In geometry, we're accustomed to working with angles that have measures between 0 and 180. But in trigonometry, it's going to extend beyond 180. And so we think of it in terms of revolutions or complete circular motions. So we're going to call it theta. Okay, so this symbol here. That symbol is called theta. And that's going to be our rotation in standard position. Now, if the rotation for an angle is less than one revolution, so we're saying less than one revolution, oops, then its measure is going to be between 0 and 360. So if it hasn't gone a full loop of the circle, it's going to be between 0 and 360 because remember circles have 360 degrees. And an angle of rotation that is measured clockwise has a negative angle measure. So if we follow the direction of a clock, that would actually be negative. Coterminal angles, we'll be talking about a lot about coterminal angles are angles that share the same terminal side. So they're, they share the same terminal side. So they end up at the same location. So for example, 257 is the counterclockwise rotation of this line, and negative 103 is the clockwise rotation. They both end at the same location, so they are considered coterminal angles. Coterminal angles are powerful because they help us find the measures of larger angles by using known measures of smaller ones. If the rotation for theta is more, is greater than one revolution, but less than two revolutions, so if it's between one and two revolutions, then our measure would be between 360 and 720. Because two revolutions would be two circles of 360, which is 720. And so you can have any number of rotations. So notice on this one, we looped one full loop of the circle. There's one full loop. And then we had this additional piece beyond. And so that's 420. So we went 360 and 60 degrees more. We went 360 degrees and 60 degrees more. So we got all the way to 360 and went 60 more to get to 420. And so 60 would actually be a coterminal angle because it lands at the same location as 420. So we want to draw an angle of rotation for 310 and figure out what quadrant is the terminal side of the angle. So quadrants, remember the upper right quadrant is called quadrant one. So, and then we go counterclockwise. So over here where X is or where X is negative but Y is positive, that's called quadrant two. Where X and Y are negative, that's called quadrant three. And where X is positive but Y is negative, we call that quadrant four. 
So 310 degrees. We're starting from here at X. That's considered 90 degrees. If I go up one quadrant, that's 90 degree angle. If I go all the way to a straight line, straight line is 180 degrees. If I go another right angle past that, that's 270 degrees. So how many more degrees would I need to get the 310? Well, I would need to go 40 degrees further than 270. So we're just gonna, you don't have to perfectly measure, don't get out the protractor, but about where 40 degrees would be. I know perfectly in the middle is 45. So it's a little less than the middle. But I can't just draw the terminal side. I have to show where it's rotating from. So it's going from zero, going past 90, more than 180, past 270, all the way here to 310 degrees. And so the terminal side of 310 degrees is in quadrant four. The terminal side of 310 degrees is in quadrant four. Now we want to draw a positive coterminal angle. We want to draw a positive coterminal angle and figure out what the angle measure would be. So, so this is my 310. That's my 310. Now, this would be a coterminal angle, but to make this measure over here, that would be negative. And it says I want a positive coterminal. So the only way I can make a positive coterminal is if I loop around another time to get back here. Well, if I have to loop around one more time, that's making a full circle. To make a full circle, that's 360 degrees. So 310 degrees plus 360 degrees is 670 degrees. So my coterminal angle would be 670 degrees. Now for C, it says to draw a negative coterminal angle. So I'm just going to do it on the same picture. And I'm just going to change my colors. A coter negative coterminal would mean I start from my initial side and go clockwise. So I go clockwise to there. So how much of a measure would that be? Well, so... To get that measure, it's going away from that 360. And so 310 plus what would be 360? So basically what's happening is we're doing 310 minus 360 is what's happening. And so that angle would be negative 50. Because if I add 50 more, that makes this gap here. But since I'm coming from the initial side, since I'm going clockwise, clockwise means a negative angle, negative 50 degrees. So in angle measures, negative versus positive tells me the direction of the angle. Okay, so counterclockwise is measured by positive angles. Clockwise is measured by negative angles. All right. So let's understand radian measure. You were introduced to radian measure in geometry. In this diagram, we have three circles. So we have this circle one on the inside, circle two in the middle, and circle three on the outside. The arcs are on the circle between the initial side and terminal side of 225. And so the arc that's created between those are called an intercepted arc. So my first circle is AB, and that has radius of one unit. The next one is CD, has a radius of two units. And my third one is EF, and EF has a radius of three units. 
If you look, these arcs are not the same. They are all made from an angle measure of 225, so the angle measure is 225 degrees, but the length of the arcs are not the same. Okay, so that first one's one, the next one's two, the next one's three. So they do get, they get bigger. The further out, the bigger the radius, then the bigger the arc length. So the angle of rotation is 225 degrees counterclockwise. And how many degrees are there in a circle? There are 360 degrees in a circle. So what portion of the circle is 225? Okay, so you wanna reduce your fraction. See if you can reduce it some more. Nine goes into these, so that goes in five eighths. So it's five eighths of the total number of degrees in a circle. Okay, so the length of each intercepted arc is gonna be five eighths of the circumference of the circle it lies on. Okay, so let's figure out what the circumference of each of these are and then the length of the intercepted arc. So the first radius is one. So we get two pi times one, which is just two pi. The next one has a radius of two. So the circumference is four pi. Three, so the circumference is six pi. So the length of the intercepted arc is gonna be the circumference times five eighths. Let's see, the two and the eight simplify to be four, so that's five pi over four. Okay, four pi. So I get four pi times five eighths. Those reduce to be five pi over two. And the last one, six pi times five eighths. Let's see, two goes in there three times, two goes in there four, three times five is 15, 15 pi over four. Okay, so those are my arc lengths. And so the last thing we wanna look at is the ratio of the arc length to the radius. So we're gonna take my arc length and divide it by the radius. I'm gonna do five pi over four divided by one. And that's just five pi over four. I'm gonna do five pi over two divided by two. Well, that's the same as five pi over two times one half, which is five pi over four. Interesting. I get 15 pi over four divided by three. So that's 15 pi over four times one third. And so that reduces, three goes in there once, three goes in there five, five pi over four. So notice on all three of these, the ratio of the arc length to the radius is this constant of five pi over four. All right. And so that's our, basically our radian measure. So that leads you into your idea of radian measure that you worked on last year in geometry. Radian measure is that ratio of the arc length to the radius, all right? And so we call it theta. And so when we do radian measure, there's no degree symbol. If there's a degree symbol, then it means degrees. Radians, you write out the word radians, or you'll often see it without anything next to it. Um, one in a radian, one radian is the angle that intercepts an arc length of one unit on a unit circle. And a unit circle is one that has a radius of one. 
So we'll sometimes convert back and forth between degrees and radians. And so the way you convert from degrees to radians is a relationship between that measure of a straight line. To get to a straight line is 180 degrees or pi radians. So 180 degrees and pi is the same location on the circle. And so that ratio is what we're going to use to convert between degrees and radians. So if I'm going from degrees to radians, then I multiply with radians on top. So I always put what I want on top over what I already have on the bottom. So I take my number of degrees I have and I multiply it by pi radians over 180. If I'm going from radians to degrees, then I want degrees, so I put them on top and I have radians, so I put them on the bottom. So I do radians times 180 over pi. So let's go ahead and try this. These first ones are already worked out for you, so go ahead and look through those. But we'll go ahead and do part B. So I have pi over 8. So I'm going to be, since it's already radian, and I want to go to degree, I'm going to put my I'm going to put my degrees on top and my radians on the bottom. So 180 over pi times pi over 8. So the pi's cancel, and I have 180 divided by 8. And so reduce that. So 90 over, oh yay, glitch. 90 over 4. Well, that can reduce some more. That's 45 over 2. And so you can leave it like that, or you can give it to me as a decimal. But we are left with degrees at this point. And so I'm going to just leave it like that. So 4 pi over 3. Again, I have radians. So I put my radian on the bottom and my degree on top because I want degrees. The pi's cancel, and now I need to work on reducing. So let's see, 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 180 60 times. 60 times 4 is 240 degrees. Okay, next one. So I have 9 pi over 2 radians. So I'm going to leave radians on the bottom, and then what I want is degrees on top. So pi's cancel. 2 goes into 180 90 times. 90 times 9 is 810 degrees. If my radian measure is negative, then my degree measure will be negative. So the sign doesn't change when you make the conversion. It stays the same. So I know my answer is going to have to be negative. So the pi's cancel. And then I see, can I reduce 12 and 180? Well, 6 goes into 12 twice. 6 goes into 180 30 times. Well, that can reduce some more. So now I get 15 times negative 7. So 15 times 7, 35, 105. So I get negative 105 degrees. And last one, again my degrees over my radians, negative 13 pi over 6. So pi's cancel, 6 goes into 6 once, goes into 180 30 times. I have to do 30 times negative 13. So I know that's going to be negative, and I'm going to do my multiplication. And I get 390 degrees, so I get negative 390 degrees. Go ahead and look to the board for your homework assignment.